the crypto Robin Hood, a 30-year-old billionaire who wishes to give away his riches. The Economic Club of New York has welcomed kings, prime ministers, and presidents, as well as Jeff Bezos of Amazon.com and Jamie Dimon of J.P. Morgan Chase. The opinions of central bankers at the 115-year-old organization have influenced markets. Sam Bankman-Fried, a 30-year-old Bitcoin billionaire, is likely the first to play a computer game while making a presentation. One morning in February, Bankman Fried is the featured guest, lying on a gaming chair in blue shorts and a grey t-shirt promoting his cryptocurrency exchange, FTX, his mop of curly hair flattened by his headphones. He's calling from his office in the Bahamas via Zoom. The novelty of such appearances has worn off for Bankman Fried, who has testified before Congress twice since December. The previous weekend, he watched the Super Bowl from box seats directly behind NBA star Steph Curry, who is an FTX sponsor. There was a lunch with basketball legend Shaquille O'Neal and a party died by Goldman Sachs's CEO. Sia, the musician, invited him to a dinner with Bezos and actor Leonardo DiCaprio at a Beverly Hills estate, where Kate Hudson sang the national anthem and he discussed cryptocurrency with pop sensation Katy Perry. The next day, in an unsolicited endorsement, she told her 154 million Instagram followers, I'm quitting music and becoming an intern for at FTX official fine. Bankman Fried was working for a humanitarian organization five years ago that supported the then fringe concept of effective altruism, using scientific reasoning to figure out how to do the most good for the greatest number of people. Then he noticed a seemingly too good to be true pricing anomaly in Bitcoin and thought that the right path for him would be to make a lot of money to give away. After venture capitalists recently invested in FTX and its US arm at a combined 40 billion US dollars valuation, Bankman Fried is now one of the world's wealthiest persons, with a fortune of more than 20 billion US dollars, according to the Bloomberg Billionaires Index. A Crypto Robin Hood Despite his affluence, Bankman Fried maintains the same underlying principle. He'll keep enough money to live comfortably, 1% of his profits or, at the very least, $100,000 each year. Aside from that, he still intends to give it all away, every dollar or bitcoin, as the case may be. He's a sort of cyber Robin Hood, taking on the rich at their own game to gain money for capitalism's losers. Despite this, he is now a part of the power structure that is responsible for the problems he claims to want to solve. Bankman Fried, by far the wealthiest person to emerge from the effective altruism movement, is a thought experiment from a college philosophy lecture come to life. Should someone seeking to save the world first gain as much wealth and power as possible, or will the pursuit corrupt him along the way? According to his contemporaries, Bankman Fried sounds like a peculiar kind of capitalist monk. According to one, he worked so hard in the beginning that he barely showered. Another claims that he has sworn off relationships because he does not have the time. Sleep appears to be an unnecessary luxury for him. Bankman Fried now resides in Nassau, the Bahamas capital. FTX intends to create a 1,000-person campus with a view of the ocean. For the time being, it is based in a one-story red-roofed structure near the airport. Bankman Fried spends his life like a college student who is constantly prepping for exams. He drives a Toyota Corolla, and when he's not at work, he lives in an apartment with 10 or so housemates, despite the fact that it's a penthouse at the island's most luxurious resort. Bankman Fried estimates that up to five of his co-workers are also billionaires. They are all about his age. The crypto sector may appear to be an unusual choice for a do-gooder, it has enabled countless scams, turned ransomware into an industry, and consumes massive amounts of energy, as much as the entire country of Malaysia, 
according to some estimates. Bankman Fried, on the other hand, does not view it that way. He claims that FTX operates an honest market, conducts background checks on consumers, purchases carbon credits to offset its emissions, and is more efficient than the mainstream banking sector. But it's evident that the major attraction for him is getting rich quickly. He laughs as he presents a graph that shows FTX increasing faster than his main competitors, such as Binance. The market is enormous. On a good day, FTX is only the third largest crypto exchange by volume, yet it handles 15 billion US dollars in transactions. Users are buying and trading Bitcoin, Ether, Dogecoin, and hundreds of other strange coins instead of Microsoft shares. Bankman Fried plans to enter the US market, which is controlled by Coinbase. He intends to provide Bitcoin futures, swaps, and options, which he sees as a potential 25 US dollar billion per day industry. If he is successful in taking over the crypto economy, the conventional finance industry will be next. We're kind of playing in the kiddie pool, adds Bankman Fried. Ideally, I would like FTX to become the world's largest source of financial transactions. The writer Ayn Rand's Me First Principles have inspired cutthroat entrepreneurs ranging from Uber's Travis Kalanick to internet magnate Peter Thiel. Bankman capitalist Fried's muse is utilitarian philosopher Peter Singer, a Princeton professor and animal rights activist. Bankman Fried first became aware of Singer's work as a teenager in Berkeley, California. His parents are both law professors at Stanford. His mother also manages a powerful data-driven democratic donor organization, while his father is a professional psychologist. Singer has offered a deceptively easy ethical dilemma in his writings since the 1970s, though you walked by a child drowning in a tiny pond, would you stop to rescue her out, even if it might muddy your clothes? He then claimed that if you do that, and who wouldn't? You have no less of a responsibility to help a distant individual from malnutrition by donating to an international relief organization. It's as horrible as letting a child drown if you don't give significant sums of money out. Bankman Fried concurs, but he's not always sure what to do about it. If you take it seriously, it's quite demanding, he explains. However, I believe it is essentially correct. Like, if that's the proper thing to do, I don't want to deny it just because it appears difficult. Bankman Fried attended a seminar by Will McCaskill, a 25-year-old doctorate student at Oxford who was attempting to develop Singer's ideas into a movement, in 2012, while he was a junior studying physics at MIT. He and his colleagues hoped to apply mathematical calculations to determine how individuals could do the greatest good with the least amount of money and effort. It was nicknamed effective altruism. Over lunch, McCaskill explained to Bankman Fried another of his concepts, earning to give. He suggested that someone with Bankman Mathematical Fried's abilities pursue a high-paying position on Wall Street and then donate his money to charity. McCaskill estimated at the time that a successful banker donating half of her income may save 10,000 lives over the course of her career. McCaskill's opinions are divisive. Some argue that the ends do not justify the means, that Wall Street fosters inequality and undermines any good done by donations. Others argue that the movement glorifies the wealthy by portraying them as heroes while failing to address the core causes of poverty. However, McCaskill's proposition piqued the young utilitarian's interest. McCaskill recalls Bankman matter-of-fact Fried's remark with laughter, he simply responded, yep, that makes sense. It all started with odd prices. Bankman Fried came across a Bitcoin website in 2017 and saw something peculiar. Cryptocurrency was in the midst of its first boom. The price of Bitcoin increased tenfold that year, 
and investors poured over $5 billion into hundreds of initial coin offerings, or ICOs, many of which were barely disguised scams. Bankman Fried, like many on Wall Street, was unfamiliar with cryptocurrency. What piqued his interest was a page on CoinMarketCap.com that displayed prices from exchanges all around the world. Bankman Fried noticed that certain coins were selling at far higher prices on some exchanges than others. That's too simple, Bankman Fried remembers thinking. Something isn't right. Bankman Fried enlisted the assistance of a few friends to assist him with the endeavor. There was Gary Wang, his MIT housemate who was now working for Google on flight data, Caroline Ellison, a Jane Street trader, and Nishad Singh, a friend of his younger brother who was then an engineer at Facebook. All were effective altruists who believed Bankman Pitch Frieds that this was their finest opportunity to make and give away a lot of money. They settled into a three-bedroom house in Berkeley and began researching the arbitrage. The trade barriers were mostly practical. Bankman Fried named his organization Alameda Research to make it appear innocuous. However, US banks saw Bitcoin as so risky that some refused to open an account for him. Only Japanese citizens would be able to withdraw money in yen from Japanese exchanges. As a result, he established a subsidiary in Japan and engaged a local representative. Still, the firm seemed suspicious, and bank tellers would scrutinize his offshore wire payments. Each day became a race after Bankman Fried found willing banks. They'd miss out on that day's 10% return if they didn't send the money out of Japan before the branch closed. Completing the cycle necessitated the precise mechanics of a heist film. A team of employees spent three hours a day in a U.S. bank ensuring that money transfers went through, while another team in Japan waited for hours at the front of the teller line when it was time to send the money back. At its peak, Alameda was sending and receiving 15 million U.S. dollars per day, earning a 1.5 million U.S. dollar profit. Within a few weeks, before the price differential vanished, the corporation had made almost 20 million U.S. dollars. Few bets paid off as easily as this one, although there were a few that came close. In comparison to the stock market, cryptocurrency presented large goals since regular investors were piling in while only a few smart money players were looking for arbitrages. In 2018, Bankman Fried attended a Bitcoin conference in Macau, where he met some of the market's other major players and chose to stay in the thick of things. On Slack, he informed his co-workers that he would not be returning to Berkeley. Many of them eventually joined him in Hong Kong, which has more lax laws than the United States. Creating his own cryptocurrency exchange. By 2019, Alameda was generating hundreds of thousands of dollars in profit per day, enough to save a life every hour if Bankman Fried had decided to donate the money to the correct causes. Instead, he and his colleagues chose to reinvest their winnings, partly into the development of their own cryptocurrency exchange. Bankman team Fried spent four months writing the code that underpins a new exchange, which launched in May 2019. FTX caters to large traders by offering dozens of different coins to bet on, as well as complicated derivatives such as tokens with built-in leverage or index futures and even bets on elections and stock markets. Importantly, traders could use cash as security to borrow any coin they desired, which other competitors did not allow. It was a big hit, thanks in part to the fact that so many people wanted to use the exchange to trade with Alameda. By July of that year, daily trading volume had reached 300 million US dollars, with an average of $1 billion US dollars in 2020. FTX takes a two basis point reduction on most orders, roughly $9 US dollars in costs to buy one Bitcoin for $45,000 US dollars in late March. According to Bankman Fried, 
This amounted to 1.1 billion US dollars in revenue and 350 million US dollars in profit for the exchange last year. Bankman Fried handled customer support at all hours of the day and solicited ideas for new things to trade, according to Dan Matashevsky, co-founder of the crypto investment fund CMS Holdings. They have a colossal risk appetite, says Matashevsky, who trades and invests on FTX. They'll try things that fail all the time. It's strategic and astute. FTX, which was founded in the Caribbean country of Antigua and Barbuda, initially forbade Americans from trading, but several professionals, like Matashevsky, were able to gain access as they already controlled offshore corporations. However, the crypto market in the United States is massive. Rival Coinbase produces more than 600 million US dollars in income every month while offering only coins that it claims do not violate SEC rules. Bankman Fried plans to launch a US exchange with a limited selection of tokens to trade in 2020. Since then, he's been on a marketing campaign for it. In addition to a Super Bowl commercial starring Larry David and the naming of the FTX Arena in Miami, he spent 210 million US dollars to sponsor a video gaming team and picked up endorsers such as quarterback Tom Brady, former Red Sox slugger David Ortiz, and tennis star Naomi Osaka. He is currently lobbying Congress for new legislation that would allow him to offer more coins and cryptocurrency derivatives. Young digital entrepreneurs such as Bankman Fried have transformed the effective altruism movement into a philanthropic force. More than 7,000 people have promised at least 10% of their lifetime earnings through the Center for Effective Altruism's program. Dustin Moskovitz, the founder of Facebook, donates hundreds of millions of dollars each year to nonprofits rated as effective by the movement. Elon Musk, CEO of Tesla, solicited the help of a professional poker player turned effective philanthropist to advise him on giving. According to Bankman Fried, he gave away 50 million US dollars last year, including funds for epidemic assistance in India and anti-global warming projects. This year, he claims he'll give at least a few hundred million dollars and up to one billion dollars, which is more than the largest foundations. Bankman Fried now declares that pandemic preparedness is his top priority. He believes that a future disease outbreak could be as devastating as Ebola and as contagious as COVID-19. He's sponsoring an advocacy group led by his younger brother that is urging governments to spend more, and he's given five million US dollars to the non-profit investigative journalism organization ProPublica to cover the subject. We can expect pandemics to get worse and more common over time, simply because of the probability of lab leaks, he argues. If we don't prepare for it, this has a non-trivial risk of destabilizing the planet. I asked Bankman Fried if he ever has second thoughts about devoting his entire life to creating money and giving it away. Before responding, he presses his face into his palms for a few seconds. It's not a decision that I continuously reevaluate because I don't think it's good for me to constantly reevaluate anything, he says. It doesn't feel like a decision to me anymore, minute by minute. Bankman Fried collapses about 5 p.m. on the day of the Economic Club lecture, first passing out in his gaming chair, then curling up on the blue beanbag next to his desk, his elbow caressing his curly hair. Bankman Fried stirs after about one hour, eats a package of nutter butters, and then closes his eyes again. During his nap, traders will exchange approximately 500 million US dollars in Bitcoin, Ether, and other cryptocurrencies on his exchange, with FTX pocketing an additional 100,000 US dollars or so in fees. <laughs>